Hey guys, welcome back to another Nephrology Web episode coming to you from Washington University in St. Louis. We have a guest with us uh, for the next two episodes who is going to talk about access issues in uh, chronic hemodialysis. Dr. Dirk Henschel uh, was in town for a conference for access. He is a uh, professor at Brigham and Women's, and uh, we were uh, fortunate enough to snag some time with him. For the first episode, we're actually going to go to the chair side or the bedside and examine two dialysis patients' access. Uh, for those of you who are watching and wondering, we did have um, consent signed from the patients uh, for distribution of media, so both of them were very willing, and uh, we thank them for that opportunity. Um, and we're going to demonstrate some access findings for you. In the second video, which will come out next month, we are going to talk about some angiographic appearance of um, access issues and uh, some concepts regarding pressure and flow. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks. Three years, and, and the, the surgeon created the fistula, yeah. and it worked right away. Yeah. Have you ever had any problems with it? Uh, I ain't had, uh, I ain't had, well, you know how it clogged up sometimes. It did? Yeah, it clogged up. We had twice since I've been here. Twice it had to be declotted? Yeah. yeah Interesting, declotted. okay. Yeah. And did they put any stents in or did any no. surgery no. revision? No. no. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have any problems with your heart? Mm, not that I know of. You, you can walk upstairs, no yeah. problems? Yeah, because... Uh, I got prostate, you know, yep. they call it uh, the prostate, and I uh, I was doing five miles every day. Wow. Yeah. Okay. While Good. I was on dialysis. Yeah. So what I would like to do is I'm going to feel yeah. and uh, your your um, access and do some maneuvers with it just to demonstrate um, how I examine it. Okay. So one of the things that I that I like to get an idea. Of for is how pulsatile it is. Okay. So that means how bouncy it is. Okay. And these large parts here, these aneurysms where they put the needles in, they're usually bouncier mm -hmm. than other parts of the axis. So you can see my finger here. Yeah. Um, and if I go and press with the same force on this side uh, where the axis is not dilated, the bounciness is not quite as strong. But it's a little bit stronger than I would think is perfect you mm -hmm. know you it's pretty good but it's it's certainly perfect and then there's this inflow segment and again you can see that the pulsatility there with that relative same force is is, is there and that's yeah. not unusual as you go from the artery that has kind of a high pressure mm -hmm. into a vein that has kind of a low pressure system now I'm always interested if you have somebody who has been on dialysis for two and a half years and you've developed pretty big aneurysms already mm -hmm. that often suggests and your history confirms that, that you've had issues twice, it clotted off. And often in this type of fistula, the problem is actually up here in the shoulder. Okay. Yeah? And interesting enough, may I, okay. mm -hmm. so when I feel this up here, right up here below the clavicle, there's a little buzzing. Have you ever felt that? You want to feel it? Right up here, there's a little buzzing. You feel that? Yeah. Okay. That's the blood trying to push through a narrowing. Okay. So there's a, we always think a thrill is a good thing, and it is, mm. and we feel the thrill down here, like you can feel the buzzing right there, and that's, that's yeah. probably the doctor says, you know, you want to know that every morning you wake up, you feel the buzz, and if it's there, you're happy and your fistula is working. Right. Now, if you have a second buzz up here, that suggests that there's a narrowing there, and the blood has to squeeze through, and the buzzing sound here with the narrowing would indicate that the blood is kind of bulging up before that narrowing and creates increased pressure in the inside of the fistula. Mm. So when they put the needles in, the healing is always under relative pressure. So normally your skin was flat like this, mm -hmm. but because of the pressure and the healing, slowly and slowly you get these aneurysms okay. and you can get thinning of the skin. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I often like to do is I like to elevate the arm and see if these collapse and you can see now they're not collapsing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're staying stiff as they are and they're pretty bouncy. Now as I slowly decrease the inflow, you see how I can make them collapse a little bit? Yeah. Like they're not as, and the bounciness is gone. Can you demonstrate that one more time and release yeah. the pressure? Okay, so if I release the pressure, you mm -hmm. see the bounciness? Mm -hmm. and, 
and then if I re if I if I I'm not occluding it completely. I'm just reducing the flow. I get the bounciness away, and now what I'm doing is I'm basically matching the inflow to the outflow. Now in him, it would be good to open the outflow, get rid of the stenosis, then he could tolerate more flow. Now to really look at the health of this fistula, I occlude it completely now, and then I basically want this to collapse. Do you see how they how everything goes away? Yeah, so there's no blood flow now. Okay. And what you can check now is a how thin is the skin? You want to feel this? Do you feel how thin that is in comparison to your other skin? Skin, yeah. Like it's really thick and nice thick there, and here it becomes real thin. thin. It's it's not super paper thin yet, uh -huh. but it's on its way. And at some point, if the skin gets too thin, it can actually lead to bleeding. Yeah. So that's something that the dialysis that in the unit like the doctor or the nurse want to check at some point mm -hmm. or if they notice that you have more bleeding after needle removal yeah well that's something to look at and that and the surgeon can fix that they can do you know they can excise this and make it smaller um, so the other thing that you can do when you occlude the access like this and you have these aneurysms you can feel if they're like hard pieces in there so feel mm -hmm. this one here you feel how there's a little lump in there? Lump in there, yeah. That's chronic thrombus that forms in these aneurysms often at the needle insertion sides. Um, it's often unavoidable. Yeah, there's nothing good or bad about it, but it's there. there. And in rare cases, what happens is if you have a lot of that stuff in there, you put a needle in, one of those pieces goes flying, and it sits up here on the shoulder in the narrowing, and shuts off the access. So sometimes, you know, you've had two of these episodes. Mm -hmm. That could have been a mechanism how it works. Right. Yeah. So very interesting. I mean, this was very helpful to me to see what is there. You know, and and long term, the way that one could approach this is in in our clinical practice. If you come back frequently for these clotting events, mm -hmm. we often place what is called a stent or a stent graft in the cephalic arch to stabilize the narrowing. Yeah. Then we measure how much blood flow do you have. Young man like you, you know, strong body, you may have a lot of blood flow in there. Mm -hmm. And if it's too much, we would then reduce the inflow to basically have a long-term balance between how much blood comes in and how much can go out. Yeah. It's a little bit involved and clearly your skin is good enough to kind of tolerate this for a while. Mm -hmm. But you know, you're two and a half years in, your aneurysms are getting pretty big, you, yeah. you're having that thin skin here. I don't know how long it takes usually to get a transplant in St. Louis. Uh, uh, Five to six years or so, well, see, the wait time on the list. Yeah. Can be depends on blood type too. How, yeah. how long have you been waiting? Well, I've been waiting, uh, like, I haven't been on the list because I've been having problems with my prostate. I see, yes. Got okay, I got radiation. I, I hear, yeah, 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 they have to wait five years at least, I think, yeah. after that. Uh -huh. so, uh, but, but nevertheless, so another, so you need the fistula for a long time. Yeah, right. So you want it to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So, for that, you know, it it uh, it's a good thing to match the inflow with the outflow capacity. Okay. You know? And, you know, this can be revised either by taking out the lumps or a different way is to put a biograft around it, like a, a circuit around it to have intact skin. Lots of options. And nothing is pressing immediately. But it's just something, I think, to, keep to, just, to keep an eye on in the long term. Yeah? And you wake up every morning and you feel your access? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. Any questions for me? No. Just uh, get the center some lunch. <laughs> oh yeah, that's important. That, we'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. It was a it was a pleasure that uh, talking to you. Same here. And thank you very much for being so kind and helping us with this. Okay. I hope that some of this helps you understand what's going on with the fistula okay. and what you have to look out for. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Doc. So tell us a little bit about the access and your your history. Okay. Um, it was November of two thousand and nine. I started. Uh, dialysis. Uh, received a transplant January the 22nd of 2011. So for almost six years that uh, my fistula was inactive. Um, 
And then in anticipation of coming back to dialysis because my kidney was failing, um, Dr. Sanchez installed a graft. So he replaced the fistula with the graft or was it all bumpy lumpy and they had to kind of make it smaller or or how did that work? It had work? just been inactive and there was some blockage in there is my understanding. But so there was still flow. There was still some flow, but correct. it was... And then they had to uh, to get me ready for dialysis and make it functional again, I suppose, put a graft in there into the existing fistula. Okay. So now you're, the needle's already placed. Right. So for me to examine it, I'll have to ask for a very low flow for a little bit, like 50 flow, if you can put that on the machine instead of the 420. Let me, let me yeah. uh, make sure. So the, the, ch the thing is, that I, I want to feel it, I feel the access a little bit, and I'm going to push around on it, and I, I will cause some needle alarms, so the, some alarms of the machine. Okay. But it it uh, it should not harm your kidney or or yourself. So uh, the, uh, the, the fist <laughs> or yourself. All right. right. All right yeah? Take a look. So the the inflow here is relatively large, um, and that's not unusual in a fistula that's now eight years old. Okay. It's an upper arm fistula. Um, it's eight years old, and uh, when I so what did you want it on 50? Yeah, lo relatively low flow because then otherwise the I'm, I'll work against the machine. No, on 50, like just 50, 50. Okay. just barely that that it doesn't alarm. Um, and so one thing that I want to that I look at usually is how strong is a fistula. Okay. And um, you know I feel the pulsatility and the way that it is at the moment there's a soft uh, heave, but the vessel is pretty large. Okay. So as I occlude, I would expect this to become much much stronger and it's pretty strong you can see it pulsatile yeah you can see the pulsatility mm -hmm. now now the other thing because the fistula has been in there for a while often when you have a narrowing and dr sanchez fixed that but mm -hmm. the segment that hasn't been replaced with the graft often has been pressurized for a long time and it's very interesting then the wall of the vessel calcifies and becomes really rock hard and that's something it's difficult in the video to show but we might be able to look at, at your ar at images of your arm if Dr. Sanchez did any uh, there's there's calcified plaque in there and if you push down here you can feel the ridges of the vessel they're like little rock little stones that you can feel in there um, I don't know if you ever play around with this at all. I really don't touch you don't. it at all. <laughs> Once we were down. Uh, and then the outflow again is up at the shoulder here. Um, may I put, put my hand on sure. this? And so we did that test over there to look at the cephalic arch. Sometimes you can feel a little buzzing or thrill up here. Mm -hmm. You don't have that. Um, and that would indicate you know, the cephalic arch is, is, is open. Um, now I'm going to lift your arm all right. and see how much this collapses and I, I hold your arm and you can see okay. that there's a little bit of it it's some softening not greatly so and then we can feel the graft here actually oh so what he did is what dr. Sanchez did is he revised the whole thing and con he converted a brachial artery to cephalic vein fistula to a brachial cephalic vein with a transposition outflow here and graft to the axillary vein. So now it's a graft, and if there's a stenosis, it develops at the venous anastomosis, and again, there's a little bit of a buzz. It's not very accentuated during systole. It's a continuous thrill up here, so there's a relative narrowing right up here um, in the, uh, at the venous anastomosis of the graft. And um, if we listen to it, we can then hear a higher pitch of the uh, of the audible flow murmur at this side right here. Yeah? Is that universal for grafts versus fistulas? Um, if you have a stenosis, you will you will hear a high pitched sound. Mm -hmm. So the the last case that we have, if you want to just rest your hand sure. up there, perfect. So I'm going to decrease the flow and see when I can get collapse of this. And you can see now here how mm -hmm. the fistula. Do you want to see this? on your own do you want to turn your head and see oh. how it collapses do you see it it's yeah. all gone can you re-expand it then? and then we're re-expanding it and you can see this a little bit oh, I see what you see. and then this is kind of the the whole one now it would be interesting to know now do you when you run or bicycle or uh -huh. do you exercise I do every day every day good it's better than I do uh, and uh, do you get fatigued at all or 
Not really. Um, you have good stamina. More what I do is a, a quick paced walking for half an hour to 45 minutes. Got it. Um, I've had some knee surgeries on my left knee, so running is kind of out of the Got equation it. at this point. So looking at this fistula, early on in 2009, 2011, I would assume that your blood flows had been relatively high, maybe two liters, two and a half liters, three liters, like to, to give that expansion of the access. Then the fistula developed the narrowing, most likely up here in the cephalic arch, which prompted uh, the surgeon to kind of do this graft that really gives you a nice insertion site now. Depending on the size of the graft, the flows in these accesses could, can be substantial. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, when they do flow measurements that you have greater than 2,000 flow in the fistula. That's not per se bad or good. Um, you're clearly tolerating it at some point, but there's some thinking that if you have relatively f high flow in the fistula over time, it affects your heart, it affects your lung, and um, you know, frankly, we only need six or 800 ml per minute of blood flow. Okay. So, um, but it's working really well, I can see that. Um, are they rotating the needles a lot, up and down, or? Uh, they do, somewhat. They always ask me if one up and one down, I don't really, that seems to work, so I think we've done that, but they kind of alter the positioning of the needle, yep. the insertion points or whatnot. Got it, so that, yeah, that's the key, is really that you want the needles basically to be inserted anywhere from all the way up here, and the arterial needle could actually go in this part, but I can see how, you see there's a relative bounciness in this segment before the graft, um, because the graft diameter is smaller than the vessel diameter here. So all the blood from that large vessel has to crowd into the graft, pressurizing this segment a little bit. Now revising this to make it smaller would be quite involved. So I can see, given that you have a good functioning graft, that at this point it doesn't seem to be indicated but okay. if your flows are really very high one could argue to revise this inflow segment and basically making it a little bit smaller which would reduce the pulsatility in this segment and would allow them to actually put a needle into this segment as well to give more expanded um, skin segment for needle insertion. Okay. Now, Dirk, in this uh, particular access here where a graft has been kind of transposed upon a fistula, yeah. the, the venous port is actually cannulating the graft. Is that this correct? This needle is going into the graft, yes. and then this needle here... Is actually on the old fistula site, I would think. Correct, it is. Yeah. Actually, the anastomosis, I think, of the graft is right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right in between, like where the transition from the large to the small diameter. I got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, you have this World Cup soccer. Did you play soccer or? I did, but not not at not this level. Not a long time. Right. <laughs> Good. Yeah, no. So, excellent. Well, do you have any questions from your mind? What What are you wondering about the fistula sometimes? I really don't. Uh, you know, at, at first it was kind of discon disconcerting how big. Yeah. It looks like an egg under there, but um, however, I'm confident I'll get a transplant again soon. I actually, I I've been back on the list yep. uh, for and active. So. Mm -hmm. And you're active on the list. Right. So and perfect. incidentally, they, uh, <laughs> I received a blood transfusion in 78 for a knee surgery. So as it turns out, I've ca I have contracted hep C. Which makes you a much better transplant candidate. Huh? Exactly. It's supposed to move me ahead of the game. Yes. Because what they intend to do, uh, my understanding is go ahead and treat that after the fact, and I've uh, agreed to a, an extended criteria donor again. Yeah. So, and my fingers crossed, gents. Good for Very you. Good. Yeah. Good. Very good. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you Thank all. You Thank you so, so much, much for taking for the time. time.